Station, this is Houston on Space to Ground 2. Are you ready for the event? Houston, Station on 2, we're ready for the event. YouTube Space Lab, this is Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. So, Station, can you read us? This is Bill Nye at uh, YouTube headquarters in London. Do you hear us? We got you loud in here on the International Space Station. How you doing, Bill Nye, the science guy? Uh, we're fabulous. Uh, you're looking great. It's very exciting. So can you just reassure us, you know, that you really are in the space station. You're not suspended by hidden wires in a closet someplace. <laughs> Uh, maybe your hair alone kind of gives it away. <laughs> there would be a lot of wires holding my hair up right now if that was what it takes, but I guarantee you uh, uh, we're up in space. Uh, I don't think, in, I'm not a gymnast, so in uh, normal life I don't think I can do this. Wow, very nice, very nice. Here I can do and it, I, here I can do it as a 10. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. So we really appreciate you taking time. Very nice. Very, she stuck the landing. Very, very nice for taking time out of your schedule. You got a lot going on up there. Um, I'd like to introduce you to a few people we have here back on Earth. We have the winners of the uh, YouTube Space Lab competition. We have Dorothy and Sarah and Amr. Greetings, everybody. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Uh, now. Sonny, you've been working I'm on their I'm ex excited to be right? here with you guys. You guys, I was uh, happy to have met you guys uh, in Washington, D.C., and congratulations. I think uh, it's been a little bit of a whirlwind for you since that time, so I, I hope you're enjoying yourself, and uh, we're ex enjoying your experiments up here, so thank you. So uh, you look very relaxed, and uh, you set your microphone down. That's very nice. <laughs> or set your microphone up or <laughs> where is up but uh what is a day like is it i get the impression you guys are busy all the time Well, every day is different, and we are busy all the time. We have a general working day, same as time as you, GMT. Um, but we usually get up around 6 and try to go to sleep around 10. But every day is different. We're doing science experiments. We're exercising. We're out doing spacewalks. We're doing robotic stuff. We just launched H or um, uh, HTV, the Japanese module that was up here, left us yesterday. So it's one thing after another. Every day is a little bit different. It's awesome. Now, uh Spacewalks, launching Japanese modules, uh, making scientific discoveries, that's routine. But you have any other stuff you have to do, like the laundry and dishes and things like that? Well, luckily enough, most of our food is um, in containers, and then we throw it away. So um, we don't really have dishes up here. If you think about it, dishes aren't going to work up in space. So we just sort of eat our food out of different types of containers. So we don't have to do that. And um, there's not a lot what of dirt of up here, you so eat? your clothes don't get dirty for the most part. What sort of food do you get to eat up there? We have a wide variety of food, which is life. really great. You know, just in this, <laughs> in this little packet, I have beef fajitas, which uh, we usually eat with tortillas because bread is a little crummy, and then it makes a mess and gets in your hair and stuff. Um, a lot of freeze-dried stuff or dehydrated stuff, I should say. And we have a hydrator right above me. This is um, cauliflower and also spinach in here because my mom's probably watching and wants to know I'm eating my vegetables. And then, of course, there's things in a can. <laughs> and, um, of course, we have can candy and uh, other things like that, which are, you know, everybody likes to eat on Earth. Uh, it does look like, uh, it does look delicious. But how about the experiments? Can you show us the experiments? Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Certainly. I think, I think you're thinking about experiments that uh, these guys sent up, right? Am's experiments and Dorothy and Sarah's experiments. Yeah. And they're right here with yeah. me. So I have them here in space. Uh, this is a gap. This is Dorothy and Sarah's. 
and it shows um, a little bit change of color from when you remember it launched. It was before uh, a little bit more red, and then we combined them in the gap experiment. And so now, obviously, with the dye, they've changed, which means uh, there's some definitely some indication of some growth. But we'll have to f see how that goes when they get returned to Earth on SpaceX coming up at the end of October. So this is where there's a dye that changes with the acidity. And so when, as the uh, bacteria metabolize, whoa, as they metabolize, it changes color. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So and the other experiment, right which I think... Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. The other experiment, which I think you guys want to take a look at, if we can get it, the camera to focus, is, uh, of course, our little Nefertiti here. Let's see if she can get in focus. Hold on. Can you see her? She's pretty in... She's in focus, yeah. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of uh, dead She's flies. a little scary. <laughs> I think she's been eating well. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Om, do you have a question about your spider here? Uh, yeah, I, I'll show you a question. So, I, I see there are a lot of dead flies hanging around in the uh, silk threads. Did you, did you get to see her actually do the jump? Oh, yeah. If, you know, she was in the CGBA, I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, in, in her habitat there, and then also in the locker where the uh, payload folks were able to see her with the camera, and that was, that's what this is contained right here. But every now and then, of course, I took her and Cleopatra out and fed them, you know, by opening the plungers and opening so more fruit flies would come out. And one day I was doing that, I had the light on like this, because as you know, um, they hunt in the daytime, and I wanted to take a look and see if I could see her. And my gosh, I saw her stalking a fruit fly, unbeknownst to that poor little fruit fly. And she was looking at it, and she was going real close, and all of a sudden she jumped right on her. So it was amazing. And so I think the spiders absolutely um, adapted to space. It was incredible to watch. Wow, I mean, okay. I'm watching you. You're very impressed. I was really no. That's very cool. So they were able, the spider is able to adapt just as you predicted, on. So uh, Sarah, Dorothy, do you have a question for Sonny? Yeah. Hi, Sonny. Hi. So um, we were wondering, can you see any differences in like how yellow each test tube is to show the levels, perhaps, that our bacteria has grown depending on the medium it's in? I'm sorry, can you repeat your question one more time? Oh, are there like different um, levels of yellow? Like, can you see the different color changes or are they all the same color? No, they're all, they're all different. Actually, this one came, I just randomly picked number five, I'm, you know, but they all have a slightly different color. This one is uh, really nice and orange, but some are a lighter color and some are a darker color of red. So yeah, they all have a little bit different. So, um, you know, I didn't get the, I was wondering about all the data points that you guys picked because I w was wondering why they were all the different colors. And I noticed it pretty much the first time I, I took them out and looked at them when I was taking the pictures that they were definitely different ones had different colors. So you're going to see some interesting results when you get these back. And you know right now we're keeping them at four degrees in this chamber, so um, it should maintain its, uh, w you know, where it is until it gets back on the earth for you. That sounds great. So that's what you guys predicted, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> that's not bad, people. Yeah. Look at you. Both <laughs> of you, both experiments came out pretty much the way you predicted. And Sonny, you are extraordinary part of this and we <laughs> very much appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so it's not just that these guys here have been hoping to ask you questions and thank you for answering, but we have some questions from uh, their classmates in Michigan in the United States. Here we go. Hey Dorothy and Sarah and everyone in the studio. We're back here in Troy, Michigan and we also have a question for Sonny the astronaut. Obviously, the Olympics for this summer, but we were wondering how international relations changed after we found out who got the gold medal. 
<laughs> Very interesting question. Um, we actually, you know, we have a little bit delayed TV up here. If we get streaming video, uh, it's called KU. And so during the Olympics, we would get KU and get all of the highlights of the Olympics at dinner time, which was great as a group. We would gather around the table and watch the Olympics. And I thought it was more of a bonding experience between all of us as we are cheering for each other's teams. Like when Japan would win and when Russia would win, we'd all be like psyched for each other. And I think that that's really good for um, international relations. It was not, uh, you know, on anything bad. It was more like we were supporting each other and, uh, you know, and got to know each other's athletes through through the other, the knowledge of the other uh, crewmate on board. So it was really fun. That's very good news. Very good news because our next question comes from an Olympic gold medalist, the guy who competing with spiders uh, was the long jumper who won, Greg Rutherford. Greg. Hi, Sonny. Greg Rutherford here. Just going to ask you a quick question. If our spider was my size, she could outjump me on Earth, but could she outjump me in space? Well, I think just uh, by mass, uh, I think you could probably outjump the spider. Here. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, that's good. It's good to know. Our next question comes from the flight director of the Mars Curiosity rover mission, Babak Ferdowsi, the Mohawk man. Babak. Here at the Jet Propulsion Lab, we work on robotic missions. What we'd like to know is how could we further improve robotic missions to help human exploration? That's, you know, a really great question because some people sometimes think that robotics and human spaceflight are a little bit, you know, back and forth. There's some type of competition there. But I think robotics are awesome because they will take the first step where we haven't had the technology developed quite yet for humans to go. And then the second thing they can do, um, once humans get there, they can take on um, repetitive tasks and do repetitive tasks su such that the humans can take then the next step in exploration. So I think robotics and humans can step by step and leapfrog each other so we get further and further and understand more about our universe. So I think robotics and human spaceflight together are an awesome combination. That's fantastic. You know, as the uh, CEO of the Planetary Society, this is something we advocate. I'm delighted you feel that way, Sonny. It's just, it's great. Let's change the world. So this is good, but we've got tons of questions from our live stream viewers from all over the world. So we're going to start with uh, Pekka Ulala. What is the most beautiful thing you've seen in space? What is the biggest insight you've had, Sonny? <laughs> Well, I, I tell you what it really is humbling is when you look out the window and you see something like the aurora borealis uh, or the, you know, the, the lights in the southern hemisphere also. It, it's just amazing because it really puts us in our place that we're, um, you know, the energy around us and in the universe is overwhelming and more than we can even imagine with our minds. And there's, there's more and more for us to discover out there. And then, of course, looking at our planet, it's just pretty. I mean, it's blue, it's green, it's purple. The clouds are forming, the ice is forming. It is just spectacular. And I've, I've said it a number of times, I wish everybody would be able to take a lap around the planet and then they'd have a much better appreciation for it and the people who live there. And it's, it's just so peaceful and pretty. Oh, that's great. You are our ambassador. You are our woman in space. Thank you. Uh, we have another question. This one from Cadden or Caden Kuchera. Does it ever bother you to be in such a small area, in such a confined space up there? Oh, gosh, no. You know, this place is, is great. And I was here when it was a little bit small, and we only had three people, and now we have six. But we have, you know, over 10 modules, and, you know, it goes different directions from the front of the spacecraft all the way back to the, you know, the Russian segment back there. It's like a five-story house. There's windows to look out of. Um, you know, everything in space is more fun. Cleaning is fun. So you don't get tired of being inside because there's always a lot of things to do. And uh, every now and then you get to go outside, too. Um, so that's a lot of fun as well. So, no, I never get tired of being inside here. It's, it's great. That's cool. Uh, we have another question from Brianna Page Henderson. About how long is your training? How long did you work to get ready for this? And uh, 
what are some of the things you had to do to prepare? You know, that's a great question. I think people don't realize that it, um, you know, the space station, like I said, is big and there are a lot of things. You know, we don't have uh, electricians and plumbers and com computer, you know, IT folks up here. Uh, we do it all ourselves. And the, so the training uh, can, is about two and a half years and it consists of learning about the U.S. segment modules, the Japanese, the European, the Russian. So that means a lot of travel around the world. Uh, learning the Russian language also because we fly up in a Russian Soyuz vehicle. Uh, we learn about how that spacecraft works. And so the training is pretty extensive um, on skills base so we can be able to do all that plumbing, elect electrical stuff, water stuff, science stuff. Um, so it's a lot of skills base, but it's about two and a half years and it's, it's a lot of fun. That's when you get to know your crew because we all train together. Now, speaking of getting, getting to know you're through, we, I think none of us uh, could miss. Somebody went flying over <laughs> your right shoulder. Who was that? So that was Aki. Um, you know, of course, he represents the Japanese Space Agency here. Uh, him and myself and Yuri Malenchenko from the Russian Space Agency flew up on a Soyuz. But also, who's up here at, on a different Soyuz, getting ready to go home on Sunday, is Joe Akaba, another American, and then two Russians, Gennady Padalka, Sergei Revin. So we've got a sorted a sundry of people, and um, in, in another month or so, another Soyuz will come up with another American and two Russians. So it's pretty busy up here with spacecraft coming and going and people flying in, flying out. This is a laboratory. We're working here, so you're going to see people moving around. But they move around in extraordinary ways. <laughs> I mean, they're all flying. It's pretty cool. Uh, so we, we have another question from our, uh, our social media. This is from Douglas Martin. What does Sirius look like uh, when you're up there, uh, when you're closer to the star? Sirius is a star. Or what does any other star look like, really? So it's an interesting question, and, uh, uh, you know, we're only about, you know, 250 miles, you know, 400 kilometers above the Earth. So we're, when you're thinking relatively, that's not very far from the surface of the Earth when you're thinking about how far other planets are and stars are. So size is about the same as you would see from Earth. However, without any atmosphere, uh, the universe is crystal clear. You can really see the 3D of the darkness that's going out there. I mean, it doesn't look like a black sheet. It's like it just goes on and on. Likewise, stars are crystal clear and they're bright. And so you see definitely different sizes, just like you do on Earth of stars, that some are smaller and some are bigger. But they are just crystal clear. And at night, it's, you know, it's like millions and millions of stars. You know, it's in some place you've been where there's no light pollution and it's just a crystal clear day. It's beautiful. That's cool. So you guys, do you have any other questions? I you got it right here, yeah. right there. I have a question. Uh, how many sunrises do you see in a day, in a 24-hour? In a 24-hour. So in 24 hours, we go around the Earth 16 times, so you'll see 16 sunrises and sunsets. Um, here in the laboratory, you know, we've got a window below us, but it's taking some really um, nice pictures, and so we have it covered up with a black cover, so the pictures will come out real well. Uh, the coop cupola is around the corner, and you can sometimes it's right where the gym is, and so when you're lifting and working out, uh, you can see the sunrise and sunset right above you. Um, but I tell you, when we were on a spacewalk, you can really tell the difference. Um, the heat, just the heating and cooling from the time when the sun is up and when the time that it's dark is unbelievable. Before the sun even shines on you, you can feel the heat start to uh, generate around your body. Um, so it's impressive, uh, the vacuum of space, how much heating and cooling goes on out there and how much sun changes things. That's fantastic. And I remind you, it's not magic. It's science. That's pretty cool, Sonny. Thank you so much. I'm afraid we're about to lose you. Uh, our satellites are going to lose touch with you. But do you have any final words for the winners, for Dorothy, Sarah, and Amr? Thank you so much. 
Well, of course, congratulations to you guys. Your experiments were awesome up here. I know that there were thousands of other wonderful participants in this uh, contest or this, I think, more of a gathering of scientific minds of our future. So thanks to everybody who participated. Uh, you guys all made the contest awesome. We're just honored to have been part of it. So thank you. Thank you, Sonny. That's just great. Thank you so much. We'll let you get back to work. Uh, oh, wow. That was just wonderful, wasn't yeah. it? She's flying in space, yeah. you guys. Come on. Uh, thanks, Mission Control. Thank you very much. We'll let you get to back to work back to work as well. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event.